This is the Guardians and Gladiators podcast, a Special Olympics based show with your hosts, Lozy and Coach. And here we are, and welcome to this week's episode of Guardians and Gladiators. I'm your host, Lozy, and always with me is my coach. How are you? Excellent, Lozy. How are you today? Pretty good. Wicked, wicked. But how did you like the weather today? Oh, I loved it. I love the snow. <laughs> I love the snow. I'm a, I'm a northern kid. Yeah. So snow is all good for me. <laughs> um, anything interesting happening today? No. No? No. Well, there is something interesting. What were you doing today? What were you dropping off? Oh, the Tim Horton Donuts started today. Right. And Special Olympics. There it is right there. And Choose to include. Choose to include. That's right. And so what's special about those donuts? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the proceeds go the to proceed, Special Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny guy all right well let's get into it here um why don't you introduce our guest he is joining us from Which out of town go ahead today our guest he was a former kingston front neck in the early 90s he's the first player to go back to back 100 point seasons the first one not just in the ohl but in the canadian hockey league itself to win back-to-back humanity awards ladies and gentlemen welcome to the show kelly corpse hey guys how are you thanks for having me on thank you thank for coming. you great for you to join us here yeah so former ohl player former ohl player yeah you were drafted second round by Montreal Canadians. Montreal. <laughs> Montreal Canadians. What did you think of that? Were you a Montreal f- fan when you were uh, younger? I wasn't. That's that's. Uh, uh, I grew up a Leaf fan. Yep. Um, my dad was a Daryl Sittler fan, so he kind of preached that. And um, I actually played in an under eighteen tournament in Japan um, the year, basically the year before my draft, and uh, uh, my agent told me after playing for them he's like uh he's like can you speak french and i was like no not one bit and he goes well you better learn because uh, uh montreal really likes you and they're probably going to draft you and so sure as heck they uh they drafted me so but it was an honor it was an honor regardless just to get drafted in the nhl but yeah. obviously i wish it was anybody but montreal. <laughs> especially as a leaf fan absolutely that's right <laughs> <laughs> with that, with that Jeff and that tournament in Japan, one of his yeah. team line was Paul Korea. Nice, that's right. Yes, yeah, we had a pretty good team. We had uh, Paul Korea was on the team, Mike Pekka, Chris Pronger, Holy cow. Um, Rob Niedermeyer. Yeah, well, we had uh, we had a pretty good squad. Wow. Yeah. Now yeah. that was um, now I noticed that you were on with team Canada. So I'm assuming that's what it was with, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so they have two different versions, right? They, they would have the Olympic team, which is the Olympic years. And then they'd have yep. the national team, which uh, I played on, which was a non Olympic year. Right. So those were any major tournaments that you played in. Cause the first, I, and again, I'm just looking at stats here. The first time that you were on the team Canada, it only showed one game played. So was that yep. the one? So, yeah, I was playing uh, junior hockey, and what they did was they used to travel around Canada in non-Olympic years, yeah. and uh, whatever city they stopped in, they chose one player from that junior team okay. to play for their team that night. So when they oh, played okay. in Kingston, I got the game uh, to play with them. So Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Because the next time, the next year, the two years after when you were on Team Canada, you played a heck of a lot more games. <laughs> yeah, I played a lot more games. I didn't play a lot of shifts because yeah. I was only 19 at the time, and right. uh we had a, a bunch of older fellows on the team, but okay. uh, yeah, we were based out of Calgary and I lived in Calgary for uh, half the year and we played in the Spengler cup, which I guess would be the biggest tournament. Okay. And, uh, and then about halfway through the year, I went back to Kingston to uh, um, finish off my overage year. So nice. Cool. Yeah. 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 Cause you had a pretty, well, I guess the first couple of years in Kingston weren't the greatest, but the last couple of years, um, obviously with the two back to back hundred plus seasons, 100 point plus seasons yeah. i'd say you did pretty yeah. well there. well i appreciate that it's a uh, tough starting when i first went there um i think our, our first year we won 15 games 
and the second year we only won 16 games. So it was a uh, tough sled in there. And then we got uh, a new coach in there um, and just changed the attitude and the character of the, the team. And uh, we were able to uh, play a lot better. That's for sure. Which helped out individual stuff as well. Nice. Right on. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we actually get any further and I got to get better at this. We do um, a segment called um, Dad Joke of the Day. Now, obviously, you being a dad, um, having two kids, <laughs> you might appreciate this. And I looked long and hard of all five minutes uh, to find a hockey one. <laughs> it's time for the Dad Joke of the Day. This is the... <laughs> <laughs> You're just on the edge of your seat here. You're waiting well, for it. You, you've got a big guy. intro going into this one. It better be good. <laughs> oh, it's so terrible. Uh, so what happened on the uh, hockey charter flight out of uh, Winnipeg? What happened? <laughs> All of the hockey players were seated according to the position they play. One of them almost froze because they were uh, on the left wing. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Sugar. <laughs> That's a dad joke. Absolutely. That's 100% a dad joke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thought you'd appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I was going to do, I, was, I had another one. I might as well say it anyways, but you've probably heard this one. Why does the hockey rink get hot after the game? Why? All the fans left. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad actually that's all right one for two is not bad yeah, one for two. Uh, yeah i got i i love the groaners those ones are are usually the best but yeah that one's good you could use that one with your uh with your kids i'm sure they'd like that one 100 percent. <laughs> so what are you doing these days um apart from coaching uh, a few things, really. Uh, last year, um, I coached a minor hockey team, and I uh, kind of gave up coaching minor hockey to to try to coach the Norwich Merchants, which obviously is a little messed up at this situation. But mm -hmm. I also run a hockey school. I don't know if you can see my hat, but it says uh, Dead Man Hockey Dead on Man it. Hockey, and yep. uh, So I run some clinics here in Woodstock and uh, um, just a lot of puck control and uh, edge work and uh, – um, besides that, you know what, my, uh, my oldest boy's playing hockey in the States. So pretty lucky we get to watch him on uh, YouTube every Friday and Saturday. Oh, cool. And, uh, that's about it really. Like yeah. my life is pretty quiet. Um, it was a little more hectic back when I knew Chris, that's for sure. But uh, it's a lot more quiet now. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should maybe get into that a little bit there. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, when did you meet Chris? 2004 yeah 2004 yeah. we uh through community living and uh um we i just had some arby's we went to arby's the first time yeah because you made me go to arby's you want <laughs> you made me go to arby's because i said where do you want to go <laughs> and that was the first thing that came up <laughs> yeah arby's because you knew you got i think you got two burgers for the price of one that's what you yeah. told me but i ended up having yeah. both of them <laughs> you bugger <laughs> that was the that deal was funny. it was funny the first time i met him though because uh when i went to community 11 and uh they were teaming us up with, uh, I went with a buddy of mine and they were teaming us up with our, with our guys. And, uh, um, so I'm talking to the lady and I could just hear the Chris's laugh down the hall. And I, I start giggling kind of by myself with the lady and she goes, well, you can keep laughing because Chris is your guy. You know, so then Chris comes in, he's got the laugh and, uh, we got along pretty good. So we had some similar interests, right? Like hockey and, yep. uh, and he likes Arby's, so we're all set. So. I mean, it's hard not to like Arby's, right? No. No, that's right. You can chatter. <laughs> that's good. Are you still police officer? Yeah, so I got hired in uh, 2005 with Toronto Police, and, uh, um, and then uh, I decided to transfer uh, about three years later, um, just to be closer to home because I was driving from London to Toronto to work and they were working seven, seven shifts, uh, in the afternoon, seven on midnights. 
and uh, it was just too much on the family and uh, with my two young boys uh, growing up I had to get back and I wanted to see them quite a bit so now I'm in Brantford and I've been there I guess I've been a police officer now for about 17 or 18 years so wow that's not bad yeah what's that commute like that, that's not too bad from Woodstock right no it's not bad at all 25 minutes so oh, that's and it's, right. uh, it's kind of nice though after you work right to unwind a little bit so yeah yeah, I know. I, yeah. I've definitely done, well, done the drive to Waterloo every day. So it is nice That's too. A long drive. <laughs> <laughs> it does get a little long, especially in the wintertime. But yeah, the, uh, the so. unwind for sure, I can definitely uh, agree with that. Nice. Um, now, going back to your company there, the Dead Man Hockey, um, yeah. how did that come about? And like, obviously, you did say that you do like edge work and stick handling and stuff like that. Yeah. So, what uh expand on that so i had a hockey school a long time ago and then i kind of shut it down as i got busy at work and the kids were growing up but uh um my son and i decided that because our last name being corpse Mm -hmm. and corpse being a dead body we decided to call it dead man and uh we came up with the logo yeah and uh our big thing is woodstock's a small community it's a single a double a center Mm -hmm. and uh we wanted to be able to give triple a caliber um instruction to single a level players that yeah. might not have the opportunity to go to those high level camps and uh we've been very fortunate the the um the hockey community around here has really bought into it and mm-hmm. anytime we put ice time out it's, it's filled quickly and right. uh um just a different range right right from house league um you know right up to some triple a kids so yep. been really lucky and uh it's actually taken off fairly well and we're looking to hopefully expand maybe in the next year or so into some clothing and uh yeah. you know i'm selling hats and and mm-hmm. uh and things like that so yeah. um but these are always good it's, it's just yeah a fun, yeah it's a, it's a fun adventure with our family right awesome. like so it, it's, it's been nice yeah that's cool i did notice that um one of your coaches is a figure skater and i think that's really unique yeah. that you yeah. have a figure skater for like edge work and stuff like that that's that's really smart well, she's, uh, it's actually my wife and okay. she's the best skater in our family. Yeah. I've played pro hockey. My son's played college hockey yeah. and she could skate rings around us. Yeah. It's, uh, for hockey players, if you don't have a figure skater teaching you, yeah, uh, you, you're not really learning the proper way to use your edges. It's yes. the way I look at it. Yeah. No, that's mm-hmm. really smart. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, more, more schools should definitely, uh, do that, do that but let's not, you know, Put that out there, right? You want yeah. to <laughs> corner that market there. <laughs> here, right? That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. That's really neat. So that's Colt that's down in St. Louis, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Good good, uh, good investigation there, buddy. Good yeah. Job. I chat with him a few times over Twitter. So uh, have you? Good for yeah. you. Yeah. 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 He's uh he's doing well. He's in his uh second year of college down there and uh uh really enjoying it and uh you know he wants to be a teacher or, or possibly a lawyer when he gets out so we'll see which avenue he takes but uh good life experience for him he was when he was in his teens uh, he actually lived in cleveland for uh two years at prep school and uh so he's he's been pretty fortunate that he's been able to travel over the country and uh and see different things so yeah that's cool then i think before the pandemic kingston drafted him as well yeah kingston drafted him and then uh he went to uh two camps and uh uh, he could have went back for a third camp but decided to keep his college eligibility open because he's a dual citizen yeah and uh decided to go to the states and get schooling so um we've kind of pushed schooling with my wife being a teacher and uh um, how important it is nowadays to have an education yeah. and uh, um, we're lucky he took that pass so nice so does he play in NCAA or is it just like a local yeah. college route yeah yeah he plays uh plays college hockey down there so um, they're right now they're um, like a division three school but they're mm-hmm. They're trying because of uh, the expansion into Division One. Mm-hmm. They're trying to get to Division One. Most likely, it'll be a year after he's done there, uh, so we won't, won't have the option. But uh, it's a it's a real nice school, though. Yeah, still D three hockey's. That's that's still really competitive. Yeah. So nothing to yeah, uh, shy away from. Hockey. Um, 
Now, you have played in numerous leagues across North America and the world. Um, yeah. What was some of your favorite leagues, or what was your favorite league to play in? Once he told me Italy. Yeah. Yeah, Italy was nice. You're right. Italy, Italy was really pretty. Yeah. Um, I really, in Europe, I really enjoyed Germany, mm -hmm. the way we were, uh, the way we were treated. Yep. Um, I was about uh, two hours outside Munich. Nice. Um, but probably the, the two best spots that I ever played minor pro hockey was uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana in the United League and uh, uh, Wheeling, West Virginia, which most people would think Wheeling, West Virginia, like seriously, they have a hockey team. I was going to say, yeah. that sounds like a really, really, really small town. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's uh, it was uh, the first place I played, and it was uh, probably the most fun I've had playing hockey, and it's uh, – West, it's it's probably about 45 minutes away from Pittsburgh. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So that's where we used to practice when Mario and uh, Yager were there. So we got to watch them practice before us. And nice. uh, so it's kind of neat. Yeah. Nice. That's really cool. <laughs> How about you, Chris? What have you been up to? Well, let's see. I did uh, 2015. I was part of a Team Canada golf team that went oh. to South Carolina. Nice. What came 18th out of 150 golfers. Yeah. yeah. Good for you, bud. Been to numerous See, provincial games for floor hockey. Yeah, yeah. I knew you like the floor hockey, so yeah. Well what did what did we do this past weekend? Oh we went to Scarborough won silver there in that tournament. Good for you. Yeah. That's Coaching amazing. in George Bray hockey. Yeah. So is that your coach right there then for the yeah. floor hockey? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So does he put you on the bench quite a bit or do yeah. you get some playing time? Yeah. <laughs> he what, gets a little bit. One, one shift of <laughs> game. <laughs> there you go. Hanging out the water bottles. The bad, guy, bad guy needs his rest. <laughs> <laughs> I give him the gears. <laughs> <laughs> oh geez. I get the first three minutes and that's it. I, I need to sit. <laughs> there you go. Man. You're just a blue guy, right? Just keep the team going. That's right. I'm like Losey, you're dogging it. Get yeah. on the bench. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I think oh, he's found good. out that uh coach is a little different on uh on the bench as he is on the uh couch, yeah. so <laughs> well, he obviously likes you so he must respect you quite a bit yeah he does yeah <laughs> i mean he gives it to me as much as i give it to him so it's yeah my got a daughter she's 10 now wow she has uh disabilities as well okay and she also plays george for hockey so oh nice yeah if you don't mind me asking what what disability chris um she has global delays Okay. Yeah. Okay. Slower than yeah, the, have, slower than the other, a normal, but she, it's just fun. She's fun. Well, that's good. Well, you knew that Ty has autism, yep. right? My youngest yep. boy. So, yeah. So I, I, I understand what, uh, you know, some of the things that you have to deal with, but you know what? It's still your kid at the end of the day, right? You yep. always love him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask, um, I was going to, you know, touch on that, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. What, uh, like, do you do anything with, like, Special Olympics or, or hockey or anything with him? Or We tried. Yeah. He's more of a, um, he's a computer guy. Okay. Um, and he's very, he's very creative at uh, creating things. He's starting to do his own YouTube channel. Yeah. And then uh, he's starting to get some hits in that. But okay. we tried him at hockey when he was younger, and he was actually a pretty decent skater. But yeah. Um, he told us the ice was too slippery. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, and then we try to join him up for the Special Olympics, but uh, he just never wanted to do it. And it's too bad because he's a he's a great runner. He's six foot five. Wow. You know, so yeah. he's a he's a big boy. So he, and uh, but just not into sports. Like even when he would go to the rink to watch his brother play, yeah. he was on his computer. But yeah, he's uh, he's doing well. He's got himself a girlfriend now, and uh, he's in love. So we're super happy. For nice. him. So how old is he now? He's twenty. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's his YouTube channel? We'll uh, we'll plug it on our on our Facebook page. It's, uh, he's got like three different ones. I believe it's uh, Ty's Ty's videos. You okay. know what? I'll send it to you. All right. Because he's got two or three, and he switches them all the time. Because uh, okay. 
he had one mm -hmm. and it got so many hits but he kind of got embarrassed about the content because it was kind of he thought childish okay so then he got rid of it and then he's got another one so okay i think it's mr ty's videos mr ty's I videos could be totally wrong. yeah but right. i'm not sure but he's uh he loves doing it and he's yeah. he's amazing at it yep yeah it, it it's fun i know i have one but it's mostly just for doing silly stuff but i mean if he, hey if he can make some money off it good for him yeah Mr. yeah Tons. he's uh i think he's i think he's made a little bit but uh yeah. he just he never seems to go through with it but i think eventually with his girlfriend's starting to uh push him towards that way okay. and uh so i think he'll probably get into it quite a bit nice yeah cool. yeah that's pretty good and yeah, uh so him, him and colt always got along when they were when they were younger or you know what um i couldn't ask for a better older son he yeah. uh obviously very protective but uh just guided him through like th them being only a couple years apart it, it uh really worked out where colt would establish himself at school mm -hmm. ty would come in and kind of blend him in and uh um same thing with high school right yes. and uh colt and his friends have treated him great and it's uh you know, at one time we they told us Ty wouldn't talk, right? Mm -hmm. And then they told us that uh, he wouldn't be able to be loving, you know, and all those things aren't true. Yeah. The kid talks, he's smart as a whip, he's yeah. loving, you know. So, um, I don't know, super, super proud and uh, super fortunate. So Awesome. Yeah. And is he in school or has he done like post-secondary at Western or, you know, any kind of university he or college? He got his uh, um, diploma from high school, and then he was going to go to Fanshawe. Um, but then he decided the last moment that he wanted to take a couple years off, and now he's just working at Canadian Tire and uh, um, just enjoying life a little bit. Because I'm not sure he knows exactly what he wants to take. Sure. So, yeah. 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 That's nice. I mean, I'm pretty old, and I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. Me either. <laughs> You got the podcast. You guys are rolling. That's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah. We're on our way to monetize it. It's getting there. It's slowly there you go. There, but it will get there. Good for you guys. <laughs> it's it, it's a big change from when it initially started. I know. Yeah, when I, I when I just started, it was just over Zoom, hit the record button, and you only hear the volume. No no oh, video. No yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It, it was it was with uh, Chris and uh, the original host was um, a police officer from here in London, uh, Derek Spence, yeah. with the torch on now. So, okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. Speaking of torch on, do you, have you ever done anything with that? Or I have not. No, no, I haven't uh, had the opportunity to do that. So, mm. and I'm not sure how far I could run. Anyways, I'm. Chris always Chris was talking about the fat guy needs a break. Well, this fat guy would need a lot of breaks. <laughs> no. Why are you laughing at me, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. No, but I, I try to get involved in the community as much as I can, obviously with being as busy as I as I have been, I haven't gotten involved as much as I'd like to, but, uh, um, you know, the people that do do it, they, they do a great job. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, one of Ty's friends, uh, plays, uh, especially in the special Olympics and basketball and stuff and mm -hmm. absolutely loves it. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. This Every thing that I got, I got into. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it's great. I, I I'm also. I mean, he calls me coach, obviously, because I'm coach of the floor hockey team. But I do coach other Special Olympic stuff as well. So I've been involved for a couple of years now. So it's it's been awesome, absolutely. Nice. Yeah. How'd you get involved? Um, a buddy of mine that I coached um, hockey with, um, like we coached a local competitive team here in London. Um, yeah. And uh, he used to um, coach golf, and. Uh, had just nothing but great things to say about it. And, uh, I was kind of done coaching with, uh, after the pandemic hit and I asked him to put me in touch with somebody and, and how it was. And 
Yeah. That's pretty much That's it. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's Started been, it off with mm-hmm. one sport and got <laughs> – you're the new floor, floor hockey coach. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. I, I started out strictly in powerlifting and then I got roped in to be an assistant with, with the floor hockey. And then, uh, the floor hockey coach is like, okay, you want to be the, the head coach now? And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. And I, that's amazing. Yeah. I do track in the track and field in the summertime and, uh, volleyball as well. Well, good for you. Well, thanks for your time, man. That's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. it's been great. Uh, nothing but love with been a great ride so far. So far, it's been pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Um. Yep. Oh no. Okay. Um. Well, maybe. Go ahead. Are you allowed to talk about what's going on? Oh, with the Norwich situation? Yes. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's uh, it's been an extremely long process. It's been about uh, seven to eight months now, and it's uh, it all started with my son. I don't know if you guys read the article in yes. the in the That's, paper by any chance, yeah. but it all started with my son running uh, a skate in the summer, like he's done for years. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's changed is. Uh, last February, I was hired to coach Norwich Merchants, who is a rival with the Woodstock Navy Vets, and it's about 20 minutes apart. So um, the owner of Woodstock, actually, I I coached him mm-hmm. in Junior C for a little bit, and uh, I reached out to him and said, hey, my son's running a skate like again this year, and wanted me to reach out to you to see if any of your players want to come out for a skate. And he's like, you know what, Corpsey, I'll uh, get back to you. And uh, it sounds good, but I'll get back to you. And I said, okay, well, here's my son's information. Let him know. Yeah. And uh, so my son started having his skates. And uh, about a month into his skates, I get a call from the league commissioner. And he wants to talk to me. And he talked to me and didn't think anything of it. And then I uh, went to Cuba. And while I was in Cuba, uh, I found out I had been suspended for a year. So That's crazy um woodstock had, uh, yeah oh my god so woodstock basically uh um put in a complaint that i was tampering with two of their players um if that person walked through my front door right now i still wouldn't know what they look like so yeah um it was my son skates he collected the money um he organized the players yep. but um i'm thinking it's a little bit of sour grapes because most of the local kids here in woodstock now want to play in Woodstock or want to play in Norwich. And uh, that's not a Norwich problem or my problem. That's a Woodstock problem. Yeah. They, they finished first place last year Yeah, and 75% of their team left. Wow. So what's that telling you? Yeah. No kidding. So, uh, it, but it right is, now we're at the, Oh, go ahead, Chris. Is it one of the, one of the players did ask for a trade way before the skate even happened? It's true. He asked for a trade in, uh, april and uh colt skates weren't until june Mm -hmm. and i actually text the owner in may so kind of the timeline doesn't really add up in their favor but um and i think the biggest thing out of this whole thing is um they never asked us for any evidence or any input yeah they just listened to what woodstock said suspended us for a year find our team like seven thousand dollars yeah and at no time have they asked for um our story or any evidence that we have and fortunately i'm a i'm a pat grag and when i get sent messages i keep them yeah so i have absolutely everything saved on my phone and my son's the same way so we have records showing that you know his bank statements his kids depositing money in his bank we have um people writing letters stating that they skate with colt and not norwich so it's yeah it's kind of ridiculous to be honest with you yep. it's uh um but you coaching hockey you know how these organizations work and yep. if they say something most of the time people aren't going to argue it yeah they're just going to uh say well they must be right but yeah. in a lot of cases they're not and but but their bylaws and um, what you can't uh what you can appeal and what you can't appeal yep. is uh, you can't even appeal the offense they want you to appeal the process what? well if they haven't given you, um, if they haven't given you due process, how yeah. are you supposed to appeal that? Write the process, right? Yeah. So it's 
they make it extremely hard for for normal people kind of um, i was lucky enough to have legal counsel right yeah. so and he guided me through it and my background in policing i know a lot of bylaws so. yeah no no kidding yeah and like i i read the read the article and and to be honest i'm i'm actually impressed with what they actually put in the article because normally if it's a london free press article it, they it tends to sometimes be a little bit of a hit piece but um i mean for for people who don't actually read articles optically obviously it looks bad but again if you read the full article you, it goes right into it and it it seems that the whole sentencing the the suspension seems very vindictive or you know against either you or the team again that's just kind of what i got out of it i don't know if that's the case obviously because we don't know but that's kind of how it sounded well i appreciate you saying that because there are things underlying that are happening mm -hmm. that people don't want to talk about sure. but it's it's in plain sight right mm -hmm. like it's it's pretty it's pretty obvious why uh without saying too much it's there's other stuff going on than yep. what's in that article yep. and it's i did a radio a radio show today out of kitchener mm -hmm. and uh, the guy uh, mike farwell who does the ohl oh, podcast I and thought stuff, we and... were the first ones <laughs> <We're close. laughs> yeah. well, you guys actually the first ones to ask me but yeah. he uh, he got hold of me but he uh he actually said after my interview was done um when he cut away he said on the radio that what you're saying there's a lot more that's going on yeah. here than meets the eye yeah and there is yeah it de it definitely seems that way um because even still from from what i've read and and understand even in normal circumstances like you should only be getting again if this is valid uh, a 10 yeah. game suspension not not a whole year and and that's the thing even if i got a 10 game suspension that's I'd probably fight just as hard yeah yeah i would i would probably fight just as hard because like i was swearing on my kids never talked to those players never received an email yeah. never made a phone call but i like i said earlier today they they actually have um the pjhl handed out a 10 game suspension a few years ago mm -hmm. for tampering yeah. it was a coach in a bar sitting with a player from another team and they were talking about him coming to play for them <laughs> wow yeah he got 10 games <laughs> He got 10 games and they have it on camera and everything. And they have nothing with me on camera. Yeah. They have no emails, no text messages, but I get a year suspension. Yeah. I know why. Like, I know 100% why. Mm -hmm. But how do you come out and say that and have them think, oh, you're just making it? Yeah. I know 100% why they're doing it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And and that, that sucks. But again, you know, you're fighting the good fight, so. Again, that, that, that precedence definitely should have, should have held up. Like what you were doing was definitely not, you know, you weren't doing anything period. What that, that other guy was doing that did get the suspension. Yeah. That is hardcore <laughs> tampering here. Let me take you out to a restaurant and a bar, buy you drinks and bill? say, come, yeah. come and play with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who paid that bill? <laughs> take that. But yeah. I guess the the why I'm fighting so hard now. Listen, there's there's ten games left in the air, and there's and we got playoffs. So yeah. if I got back in a couple of games, and maybe I could salvage it. But yeah. it's happened before me. It's happened to me now, and it's going to happen again after me if we don't step up and do something. So yeah. I'm basically fighting for the next guy, and uh, and I'll take my licks. And yeah. you know what? I've dealt with worse people than the guy that I'm dealing with, but I've never seen people actually this vindictive yeah. and i mean it's uh it's gone through the oha yeah um they wrote up several documents that stated that the pghl had no process in place to be able to handle a tampering case yeah but still voted in their favor so now i'm at the ohf and uh um, we just sent in our submission actually tonight yeah and uh we're supposed to hear um early this week if our appeal is going to be accepted and what's yeah. going on so yeah so now if if the appeal does go through then um is there any kind of like retroactive you know i don't want to say like penance for you or not penance isn't the right word but 
You kind of know what I'm getting at, though, right? I get, I get what you're saying. Um, or they're just going to come out with a half-assed apology and. Well, I think there it's a bigger issue, and I think uh, even if they came, they've got two options, right? They can send me to a hearing, then they can decide after the hearing, or yeah. they can just get rid of the situation, say you're back to coaching, yeah. moving on. But I think they have to really address. Um, the other, the, the, the other issue side. here. We, we've seen Hockey Canada. We've seen all the stuff that they've hit over the years and how mm-hmm. they've how they've operated. Mm-hmm. Well, if the biggest biggest uh, organization in our country for hockey is acting that way, how do you think the lower levels are going to be acting? Right. Yeah. So, I'm hoping that they really look into um, some of these leagues and the people that are running it because. Yeah. The people that are running it doesn't just because you're a commissioner or you're a president doesn't give you the right to step on somebody to do somebody a favor or a personal issue. Mm-hmm. You have to do things the right way. That's why you were put into place. Yeah. And I really think that um, hockey needs an independent arbitrator that watches like a watchdog watching over yeah. these companies because at the end of the day they're collecting money off every kid that plays hockey. Yep, a lot of money. And yeah, that's right. And if we're not watching over them. Are they just the people that are handing out trophies at the end of the year, or are they actually people that are solving problems? Yeah. Like the OHA in their last message they sent to me, they said, we've wasted enough time on this issue. We have other serious issues that we need to deal with. So you're telling me my organization that contribute to the OHA and the OHF, yeah. you're telling me our time's not valuable? So That's what it sounds just, like. Uh, just some ignorance that's been going around. So. Yeah. What's the other bigger issues that they have? Where's the uh, pizza party? Your in pizza party going to be? <laughs> <laughs> That's a big issue. You got to yeah. know where that is. Yeah, where we're, we're going to get the pizza and where we're going to have it. <laughs> wow. You know what? That's crazy. I would hate to have you on my team because I know we'll be hitting <laughs> Arby's, pizza places. <laughs> Yeah. Remember when we were hanging out? It cost me an arm and a leg. Oh, That's why I had it to take the cost you that much. Yeah. Really? Oh, he wasn't there before our uh, last week before this past tournament. I told the team no junk food over the week leading up to Damn. the tournament. Lucky bugger wasn't there. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Although he did throw up on the way home. Yeah, it was the bus. Yeah. I was hoping that I just ran you <laughs> that much. <laughs> it was the bus. It was a school yeah. bus. Come on. Well, yeah. It was it was a step above it school bus. Of skittles you threw into you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Back and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Back and a half. That's yeah. Not Skittles. Ah, <laughs> uh, well that sucks. Oh, and, you know. I, I do hope for the best because uh, that's that's a really and you know pardon the language I'll probably beep it out after that's a really shitty deal, um, yeah. And you know especially because like <laughs> you just got hired as the coach and you know yeah that's right like uh, no you- it's it's it sucks because you know what Norwich is such a good organization they treat everybody it's such a small community and they yeah. they treat the kids like gold and yeah. uh, the coaches and that and uh, I just feel bad honestly for my wife yeah. Um, I've probably been a bear for about seven months because, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody likes to get, uh, pushed around, especially when, when they feel they've done nothing wrong. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a crappy situation, but you know what? People go through crappy situations all the time and you have to learn to deal with it. Yeah. Um, you need to educate people on, on certain situations when you can. And, uh, I'm hoping that with the newspaper articles and the radio spots and coming onto your guys' podcast and that it, it educates people a little bit to, to keep up the fight and yep. uh, um, not just take a punishment, take a look at it and see if uh, there's things there have done wrong and uh, um, kind of move on that way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, like I said, best of luck on that. I guess we should yeah. probably move on to back to some lighter topics topic. <laughs> now that we had that serious <laughs> serious deep talk there um i i had a question that was um it, now it's again it's going to be a little bit of a stretch to go back that far um sure. he's smart he knows he knows his stuff <laughs> all right now i don't know how often you did when you were playing with kingston but what was it like playing against the knights um oh. and then if you played against them now, what would be a difference? What do you think? 
Um, you know what? Probably playing the Knights was the toughest for me. They weren't they weren't a great team when I was in Kingston, but um, growing up watching them, um, I idolized some of the players that were on their team. Yeah, because you're um, originally from London. That's right. Yeah. So I mean, when I came back, they actually treated me pretty good. I was nervous. Never had real great games against London, just because I think of the nerves. But um, yeah, and I I think the main difference now between um, are you talking the main difference in hockey or the main difference between the Knights? Um, hockey. Yeah, yeah, I guess a little bit of both. Yeah. Okay. Well, obviously, the main thing with hockey is the skill level. I don't think the IQ's gone up. I honestly don't think. Uh, um, I don't think the creativity, even though they're more skilled, mm-hmm. I'm not sure that there's the same creativity than when we played. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're definitely faster, definitely more skilled. Yeah. Um, I think the difference with the Knights, it's, it's pretty simple. It's the hunters, yeah. you know, uh, since they took over, they've just created a different culture. Yeah. Um, Mark Hunter might be the hardest working guy in hockey. Uh, I remember when my son was playing, he wouldn't just go and watch the midget draft kids. He would be there watching, you know, Bantam kids mm-hmm. just to keep an eye on them for a couple years down the line. So there's no, there's the, there's no doubt in my mind that that's had a, a huge effect on the talent that showed up in London. Like I always explain to people, like my son's draft year, um, no one really knew who Liam Foody was. Mm. You know, no one really talked about him. Um, they were always talking about these other players out of Toronto. And uh, uh, when the Knights draft him in the first round, I remember kids, uh, my kids' age, were saying like, "Who's this kid?" Well. Obviously, Mark and Dale did their homework and they found a diamond in the rough because yep. the kid's a heck of a hockey player, right? So, yeah, yeah which is like yeah. half their team all, almost all the time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think we, we had uh, Mike Stubbs on before and he was talking about oh, yeah. the, uh, the Knights and how the majority of like the, what was it, the, the spread of their players versus the rest of the OHL who get drafted or play in the nhl and it was like a night and day difference yep like i think it was like they averaged like 20 some odd players or 15 to 20 players almost a whole team almost a whole team every year would either be playing in professional or or close to nhl or drafted by the nhl versus like five for the rest of the other teams Yeah. yeah it's you know what there's there's a lot to be said about a culture and a coach and uh you know, what you do off the ice, what you do on the ice, and you prepare these kids to be pros. And I think once they walk into that dressing room, um, I think Dale obviously prepares them to be pros. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and and it's the quality of kids that he finds. Like I'm telling you, Mark Hunter's the hardest working guy in hockey. And I really believe that Toronto made a ginormous mistake letting him go. Mm -hmm. I think that team would be a different team and we would have some more playoff wins if he was with the Leafs because yeah. he knows how to put a team together. It's yeah. not all about having the top skilled guys. Yeah. You need a little bit of everything, right? Yeah. So he would have kept Neenlander back home. <laughs> yeah, the, Billy. I'm not a big fan of Billy. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Neenlander. Yeah. He really would he would have kept him in Sweden then yeah. given him a ten million dollars. <laughs> yeah. That's true. He probably nothing. wouldn't yeah, I know there, there's a few players on that team that me and my son rag on. I'm I'm like Chris. I'm a Red Wings fan, so we. Uh, oh, but my geez. son's a huge, there huge Toronto is. fan. So oh, geez. Yeah, yeah. My he's son. One those, lo- he's one of those guys. Yeah. Oh geez. <laughs> You're losing Larkin. He's gonna be gone. That's good. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. That's a good. I mean, it's. A, I think it's a good thing too. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I think you'll get some good players for him. Yeah. I don't think Stevie will be like, yeah, you're not getting 9 million, but no, no, no. He, Stevie will get, he would send them pack. No, Stevie will get uh, good value for, for Larkin for sure. But uh, yeah, my, uh, my son and I, we always rag on uh, Willie and, and a couple other players, but uh, like, <laughs> oh my God. even just like the last night, it was funny. Cause they were, they were showing on, on the broadcast, you know, uh, William Nylander was the only one at the, uh, the players uh, only, it was an optional skate for skills and drills at, uh, at the Toronto practice. And he was one of the only ones that were there. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's good. He should work on yeah. skills, you know, like shooting at the net. 
<laughs> <laughs> I mean, granted, he's the, he he is like one of the leading scorers on the lease, but he can't hit the net worth a damn. Yeah, <laughs> he's the most skilled guy on their team. It's just it just seems like when they play those teams that are a little physical, he's mm-hmm. always the second one in the corner, right? Yeah. He never never gets never there. gets there with his speed, right? Nope. No, he could definitely get there. He's he's a big guy, but he doesn't throw his weight around. He doesn't, you know, grind Typical in the corners. European. <laughs> <laughs> you got Don Cherry sitting beside you, coach. I know. <laughs> he's not one of them good Canadian boys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, oh, like man. Detroit is mostly Europeans yep. now, so that's yeah. true. Most cider, gotta love him. Uh, he's really good. He yeah. is really good. Cider yeah. and Lucas and or Lucas yeah. Raymond and they're good. Yeah, those are good guys. Get rid of Bertuzzi and Larkin. Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, sounds they like they should have sent him packing. Too, right? yeah. They should have sent him packing during the the bubble. Yep. Um, so with your hockey, obviously you you I would say had an illustrious career. Obviously, uh, unfortunately, you never made it to the NHL, but you did play for some AHL teams and, and the ECHL. So you're definitely right there. Um, now your last year of playing senior a hockey, that was in, what did I say that? 2005, right? Uh, yeah, I think probably. Yeah. That was that right. his last game. I think when you, uh, tore your knee. Oh yeah. Yeah. Against, uh, out in, uh, Tilsonburg there. Yeah, yeah Tilsonburg Thunder. Uh, he played for the T Berg Vipers. Uh, Vipers. Yeah, T Berg yeah. Vipers at the time. Yeah, they're Thunder now. Thunder now. Yeah. yeah, they're Thunder now. That's not what they're. Yeah, um, Tilsonburg Thunder. Yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of like the Vipers better. That almost sounds better. Takes me out to watch him play. Pulls his knee. That was <laughs> it. Yeah, that was it. I'm like, you're not welcome hockey. back watching me again. <laughs> Really bad luck. <laughs> you know? Throwing skittles on the ice, I probably tripped on it, hurt my knee. Because you didn't buy him Arby's. That's why Arby. it was the Arby's. Hundred <laughs> percent. Well, I don't even know if he has a wallet or he just didn't come out. I'm not sure. He's a professional mooch. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. Get some change. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, um, you led the team in points, I think, for the last two years on your yeah. uh, on your senior A team. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it was fun. That you know what the league was. Uh, the league was actually pretty good at that time. They were uh, most teams had uh, two or three ex NHL players and uh, um, a lot of guys that played in the East Coast. And mm-hmm. uh, I think with our team, it was just myself and Corey Eisen that played at a different level but most of the guys were uh, just local kids and stuff so we had a blast good yeah. team and you know so it was okay so since that was your your last year i was doing the math you were 31 when you finished playing hockey yeah. at a at a uh, pro semi pro level so i guess at that point I, chris kind of answered that question you you injured yourself but i was going to say why did you decide to hang up your skates but you know what? It was, part of it. it was funny because I, uh, I could have, I could have kept playing pro probably until I was forty. Um, I was in good enough shape and uh, um, was still putting up points. And I remember getting a phone call my that summer from a team in Fresno, and my wife was super excited. She was like, "Let's go to Fresno. Let's finish up there." And you know what? I just. I literally just had enough and I wasn't going to play hockey at all, but um, I didn't really have anything on the horizon for jobs. So I was kind of living off my last year's salary and uh, uh, Tilsonberg called me and they're like, listen, we'd like to come play senior. A. And I was like, I'm not playing senior A hockey. I'm, I'm done. And they're like, I said, I'm looking for a job. And they're like, Hey, we'll get you a job. Um, we'll give you a little bit of money. And uh what do you think? And I was like, well, I've got nothing going. I might as well do it. So I, I played a couple of years and uh, then got hired by the police. And obviously I didn't want to get injured playing hockey where it was going to affect uh, yeah. um, being a police officer. So I, I stepped away at that time, but 
I probably, I, I, like I said, I could have played until I was 40. At the time, I was in great shape. Um, after I stopped playing, I I got out of shape. So you get out of shape pretty quickly, right? So Yeah. Yeah. Just like all the other, uh, I'd say you're doing much better than like Jeff O'Neill or Andrew. Or, uh, <laughs> the O-Dog. The, the, yeah, <laughs> O-Dog and, uh, and uh, Anthony Stewart there. I think uh, they got hit a little harder oh, than, than you did there. So, <laughs> Well, I've lost, uh, it's funny because the last three weeks I've probably lost about 18 pounds. I decided to to put myself on a diet and I still got about another 15 to go. So it's a, it's a process, but you you can put the weight on fairly quickly, you know, and they call it, you know. what do they call it? Police butt. I got yeah. police butt. I'm sitting on a cruiser all the time, a cruiser butt. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of us gained the uh, COVID-19 twice, so. Uh, oh, cripes. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Yeah. When, when you're not busy, you just gain it. It's so it's easy. good. Right? Yep. Yeah. But that's good. <laughs> I've only got my last question, so it's all up to you. What was one of the, like the oddest experience you uh, experienced in Kingston? One of the oddest experiences? Yeah. Didn't you get suspended for something that you did not do there? Oh, no. I got suspended for something I did do there. <laughs> so um, that was... Uh, yeah, I got suspended for throwing my stick, and uh, showed me the uh, tape, and you told me not to laugh at him. I know, and you laughed anyways. So <laughs> I did too. Uh, was it like a sundine toss stick type no, thing? No, it or? was a javelin throw. I I would have, I probably would have won some sort of Olympics with the toss. <laughs> I, the referee called uh, um, a goal in overtime where they uh, they knocked our goalie over, and then they came in and potted, and it was again, it was. It was against Peterborough at the time, and we were battling for first place. And yeah. emotions just got got a hold of me, and I just javelin my stick in his direction, and didn't hit him, but got a ten gamer out of it, and totally deserved it. And uh, the commissioner called me from the league, and super nice guy, David Branch. He explained yeah. to me that you know, can't do that, yeah. and you know, and he asked me my my opinion and what happened and i explained it to him and i go i totally get why i'm suspended for 10 games like this that's that's a commission that's super classy right yeah. explains it to you you deserved it and off you move right yeah. but um showed me i remember uh, after him doing it and he was like don't you laugh at me and, well okay <laughs> well i thought you're gonna bring up the wolf in sudbury chris i thought that's what you're gonna ask me <laughs> what happened there well do tell <laughs> well they have uh so you guys know Sudbury Arena. Yeah, they have, a, they have that they stupid have wolf that takes 10 minutes to reset every time they score. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we uh, we got into Sudbury um, on a Thursday night, and that was my first year. And I don't know who came up with the idea, but we decided to get into the Sudbury Arena and uh, try to take the wolf. So that was uh, – I'm pretty sure we got them for a little bit. And uh, – but then their GM came uh, to the bus and said, let's get the wolf back. So I think they took him out of the bathroom and brought him back. So, <laughs> but Because we were sick of it. We weren't a very good team. So that wolf was coming across the ice like nine times a night, right? So oh, it wasn't good. God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like it actually like comes it, out? and It goes across the ceiling back. Oh, okay. But it takes like 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. to, like, and it's it a real in. stuffed wolf. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real stuffed wolf that goes from one corner of the rink right down to the scoreboard and, and it howls. And we heard it like nine times that night. We're like, come on. <laughs> we didn't want to hear it again. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, that would do it. Oh, it man. Takes 10 minutes to set it back up. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's not cool. Oh, it's not cool. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I'm done. You're done. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I have one more question left, and and it's a question I ask uh, all of our guests here. Um, you have two bowls in front of you. What is your preference, chips or sweets? <laughs> chips. One hundred percent. I got a little board. I got a little chalkboard right here, and it's got the, uh, oh, the yeah? counter of it. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think when you're younger, it's sweets. When you get older, it's chips. I don't know. Ah, uh, you know what? I've always been a chips guy. Just always. Oh yeah. For yep. Me. Yep. So. And Chris is taking a little bit of both, probably. Yeah, right? he does. Yeah. Yep. There we go. He's a savage. That one. 
I put out four bowls, two for the guests and two for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Nothing's changed then. Nothing's no, changed. No, nope. not at all. <laughs> um, so going forward, I guess, what um, what do you got going on with uh, any uh, – your programs there with uh, Dead Man Hockey? What's, what's happening with that? Uh, currently we're running uh... – Tuesday night skates for uh, kids 2012 to 2014 um, at 4.15 p.m. And then on uh, the Wednesdays, we're running uh, camps for 2009 to, or sorry, 2009 to 2011. So uh, just two during the, the school season. And then uh, we start up again with our Sunday skates in uh, starting June 4th. And then we run some hockey schools in August. So we've right. got a couple summer teams that will be playing in Brantford and London okay. in May. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so look, pretty excited about uh, the summer teams, the dead men hockey team. So me and my son get to coach together, which will be nice. So. Sweet. And then uh, if anybody wants to get in contact with you for that, what's the, uh, what's the best way? Yeah, they can contact uh, deadmanhockey at gmail.com. Okay. And, uh, and basically we'll answer any questions they have. Um, they can just pump in dead man hockey into uh, – um, the website and yep. uh, it'll bring up all the information so Beautiful. it's uh pretty easy to to solve i yep. mean i'm not computer that great on the computer so <laughs> my wife make dumbs it down for me <laughs> beautiful well i'll make sure to uh put all those links in that to uh to your site there that's um, amazing i appreciate it yeah no worries man it's uh it's been uh, a great talk and very nice to meet you um yeah yeah chris was really excited to uh to have you <clears> on here so you yeah, when I when I saw the article, I was like, <clears throat> former. <laughs> when I saw the article, I was like, former OHL player now suspended for whatever on Junior C. I'm like, ah, who's this guy? I'm like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> no, you know what? Uh, I really appreciate you guys bringing me on. You guys are doing a great job and. It was nice meeting you and, and Chris. It's awesome to see you again, buddy. I'm yeah. glad you're doing so well. And uh, um, you know, anything you guys ever need in the future, just let me know. And uh, um, you know, best of luck to you guys. And thanks so much. Yeah. No, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah. Best of luck with uh, with your hockey case there. Hopefully, it uh, hopefully uh, it all I'll ends be, up. I'll be I'll be one of your surprise witnesses. <laughs> Right on. If I hear something, I'll uh, text a message to you guys and let you know. Beautiful. All right. Beautiful. All right. Well, again, thanks, Gary. Thanks, thank you, Kelly, Kelly, for coming on. Um, Chris, shut her down. Shut her down. Yeah. Until next week, folks, be safe, be kind. Till next week, see ya. Bye, everybody.